HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. And by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. Coming up on this edition of HCAM News, in an effort to further beautify Hopkinton, the Gateway Green Project officially launched, a brand new restaurant officially opened in town, the Sharon Timlin 5K had another successful year of raising funds to fight ALS, and the Hopkinton Library Foundation hosted their annual Touch a Truck event. But first, at the Board of Selectmen meeting, a public forum was held to discuss town trash and recycling options going forward. The Board of Selectmen held a public forum to discuss town trash and recycling. The current contract expires June 30th and automated trash and recycling is an option going forward. We received three options from E.L. Harvey and the option that we're recommending is the automated collection of both municipal solid waste, trash, and recyclables. And to that end, what E.L. Harvey will do is they will provide two wheeled carts free of charge to every residence in town that is currently part of the trash collection program, and that's single family, two family, and three family homes. Um, they will, every residence will receive up to a 64 gallon container for their trash and every residence will receive up to a 96 gallon container for their recyclables. They will be used by the residents to collect their trash and recyclables. They will be put out on the curb. Trash will be put out every week as it is now. It will be collected with an automated arm by the hauler and then the recyclables will, will be put out every two weeks as they are now. I understand the collection is uh, paper uh, every other week and containers every other week. Uh, so the, the recyclables will be collected every two weeks. Uh, and the, the other primary difference with the recyclables is that they will all be single stream. So no longer will residents have to sort paper and containers will all go into that one container. Assuming we nail down what the program's going to be uh, in our July meeting after our colleagues get to see this input and we discuss it further, um, will we, will E.L. Harvey be able to do some kind of communication with every resident in town as to what the program is going to be for the next five years? And Absolutely. what the various things they can and cannot do uh, in a document or some kind of mailing or something? Absolutely, Mr. Chairman. E.L. Harvey is committed to rolling this out with public education behind it, what it looks like, what you'll be able to put in. Um, also, is if people are looking for details, I did over an hour with HCAM at the studio where I went through all of the, the components of this system. We also have an, uh, frequently asked questions, which we can put online if it's not already. Uh, but we can put it online so that folks can look, at, and it pretty well lays out all the components of the system. And that HCAM broadcast is still in their library, you can go and click on and watch that, correct? Absolutely. Okay. Don't forget, you can find the trash and recycling forum that took place in the HCAM studios this past May on our YouTube page and website, hcam.tv. Gateway Green was a donor-funded project to plant trees, flowers, and plants on the West Main Street median by the 495 exits in Hopkinton. The project was a success and will bring more beautiful scenery to one of the gateways of the town. Many different trees, flowers, and plants were installed at the West Main Street median, entering town from 495 or coming towards town from the Price Chopper Plaza. The goal of the project was to create a nice scenic landscape at one of the gateways into Hopkinton. This goes back to probably two and a half, three years ago with Ken Driscoll from Select Energy. It was his idea. Um, he got a group of us together 
uh, mostly Chamber of Commerce members, uh, and we talked about uh, the idea. And the idea was to really beautify the entrance or the gateway to Hopkinton. Um, when I found out about it, I wanted to be part of it. Uh, we're in the business of beautification. And this to me was important because when people pull off the highway, it's the first impression they have in Hopkinton. It's going to say, this is a this is a nice community. They take the, the time to beautify their, their, their road median strips and their highways. Um, you know, it's not a place for theft. It's clean. It's healthy. It says all those things. Good for the environment. So that's how the process started uh, two and a half years ago. Many donors contributed to the project, including Unibank Paul Mastriani and Weston Nurseries. My role was to really, I wanted to head it up. I think um, it was important that uh, I could do a lot in kind. And in doing that, I think it really spearheaded the project because we needed money to pay for some of the other things and we were willing to commit um, the cost value of the trees, the shrubs, and the perennials, and a lot of the labor and the soils and other people, we needed help from other people to pay for the uh, tying into the water main was a big cost and the maintenance three, four, five years down the road. So um, I was very eager to get involved and uh, we went after the business community, especially those businesses that were right local to the 495 interchange because it really affects their workplace and their commute. And um, we, we built a website uh, we built a handout. Uh, Finn Perry came on board uh, last fall and that made a huge difference. Uh, a guy named Jeff Barnes came involved and contacted a lot of businesses, solicited the donations. Um, and, and Finn's role was also to do that and to work with Gorman Richardson who did renderings that we could go around and explain the project visually to people. And really uh, with this group um, engaged a lot of businesses to donate a lot of money. So we were able to raise north of $150,000 in about a four-month time span. In front of the newly opened 110 Grill in the Lumber Street Plaza, the Gateway Green Ribbon was officially cut after a welcoming ceremony. Thank you has been said 50 times, but thank you all for being here. Uh, let me just reiterate, if you just take a second and look around at this crowd, this is, this is a quality group of people, and I think they, they, they not only, they represent Hopkinton. This is a good community on its way to being a great community. And this is, and, and these people are part of, the, part, of the, part of the reason that that's gonna happen. So, if we can have you up front, and you're all welcome to stay, please, we want you to stay and, and sample this world-class cake uh, afterwards. So thank you for being here. All right, ready? Be on the lookout for the full Gateway Green ribbon cutting ceremony airing soon on HCAM. This past weekend, the 13th annual Sharon Timlin Memorial 5K and Family Fun Day to Cure ALS took place. The event had perhaps their biggest turnout yet on a beautiful Saturday morning at Hopkinton High School. The Sharon Timlin Memorial 5K race to Cure ALS took place once again in Hopkinton. The event keeps on growing and growing, as this year nearly 1,600 runners and walkers took part in the race. The event was created in honor of the mother of former Boston Red Sox pitcher Mike Timlin, Sharon Timlin, who passed away from Lou Gehrig's disease, otherwise known as ALS, in March 2002. Well, this race came about, uh, my mom passed away in 2002, and uh, we met some of the, the race directors and, and some people from Hopkinton and just kind of put this together. And now it's in her memorial that we're trying to fight ALS. And we've lost a few friends along the way, but uh, we're really trying to, you know, destroy this disease with everything we can. Come out here, people, they faithfully come year and year. I, it, Sorry, um, go ahead. Yeah, it's an emotional year for us. Um, the president of the Angel Fund this year was just diagnosed right before the marathon this year, and um, he's been fighting for research for ALS 
for 16 years ago he lost his brother and before that he lost his father and now he's in perfect fitness of health and he has ALS now so it gives us even more inspiration to keep keep fighting for research and getting money to Dr. Brown and the genetic research clinic and get to human trials, get to whatever it's going to take to fight this disease and knock it out of here. Uh, you know, it's funny because the first year we came out here, I think we had 500 runners. And now we're at the max limit of 1,800 runners. We we tend, you know, so we've been out here so many years, we kind of push it to try to get over that. But, um, you know, the, the people that come out and support this race and that have, have been part of this community, it's it's amazing. You know, we love everybody that comes out. We You know, we try to personally say thank you um, as much as we possibly can to the volunteers, to Hopkinton Race Club that, that supply all the volunteers and just the runners. It's, it's amazing. And this year we actually brought a lot of people from Colorado. We He retired in Colorado so we get to spend some time in our beautiful mountains but we dragged some of our mountain people here this year that unfortunately have been affected by ALS. So to have them here too to support us and to see this part of our world, it's heartwarming to know that we're still pushing and we are, we're going to make a difference. It's got to happen. Can you talk about some of the other things you have going on here? Oh, well, here's the sideshow. I'm the so. sideshow, so if you want to come get an autograph, uh, Tim Wakefield's been here with me every he year. Yeah. Um, you know, so we just sign autographs for you know random donations. But I mean, it's it's a family day after everybody runs. You know, the 5K. We have face painting. We have, as you can hear, there's there's live music and you know there's a live auction. Um, you know, it's just it's fundraising for the whole time. A lot of kids fun runs too. We do a color run this year that starts in a couple minutes. So that'll be fun too. And on a side note, any thoughts about this year's Red Sox team? I'm going to let that one go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they started out really well, which is great. Um, you know, they're just kind of scuffling a little bit, you know, and that's how it works. I mean, you know, it's ups and downs. You can't be, you know, steady climbing the whole time. So I think they'll be fine. Are you guys Hopkinton residents? No, we're not. I live in Medway. I'm from Norton. Can you talk about why you're here today? We're here today to help cure ALS. We run for Phil Hino, who I took care of for two years, and for Christine's brother, Tim J Tim Jamelli, and he just passed last October. All right, and uh, how'd the race go out there today? Were you uh, satisfied with your time? Very satisfied. I was. <laughs> yeah. I finished. <laughs> yeah, and I made a PR, so I'm very happy. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Thank you. And a, and a gorgeous day for this event today. Uh, you enjoy being out here? It's stunning. We enjoy it every year. It's great. It's so well run. The people here are so kind. It's, it's an excellent run to run. It's, it's the best cause. ALF event yeah. around, yeah. And I noticed uh, you're with some kids. Um, are, are those your kids? or? They're my daughters, yeah. Okay, what's their favorite activity here? I know there's a lot of activities. Um, probably the arts and crafts tables and the face paint. As always, the event was a fun-filled day for everyone and raised a lot of money for a great cause. So hit me from behind Cause I'm gonna Carolina in my mind Karen, she's a silver sun You best walk her away and watch it shine Watch her watch the morning come for more about the Sharon Timlin 5K race, check out our website, hcam.tv, and also head over to SharonTimlinRace.org. A lot more coming up on HCAM News, including a look at the opening of a new restaurant in town and the Hopkinton Public Library Foundation's annual Touch a Truck event. You're tuned into HCAM News. Don't go anywhere. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Do you have what it takes? Make a difference. Always an adventure.
police and fire working together. Utilizing the latest technology. Do you have what it takes? Welcome back to HCAM News. A new restaurant opened in town at the newly expanded 1 Lumber Street Plaza. The 110 Grill opened their fourth New England location right here in Hopkinton. And this week, they were welcomed to town with a ribbon cutting ceremony. We are delighted here to officially welcome 110 Grill to the town of Hopkinton in the Metro West area. It's great to see that so many of you are here to support and celebrate the grand opening of modern American cuisine in a trendy, casual atmosphere. 110 Grill currently has sites in Chelmsford, Mass, Nashua, New Hampshire, Berlin, Mass, and now Hopkinton. 110 Grill opened in Hopkinton. At the ribbon cutting ceremony, Chair of the Metro West Chamber of Commerce, Sean Kimball, welcomed the new business and presented a citation on behalf of Senator Karen Spilka, on behalf of the Hopkinton Chamber, Peter Mezit welcomed 110 Grill into town. Growing up here, I've lived here all my life. This place has needed more restaurants for a <laughs> long time. So you're going to do well here. I've been to your Berlin location myself with my family, and I was thrilled with the experience. I think you guys have it in your culture to really listen to your customers, it seemed. And uh, the food was fantastic relatively affordable. I think it'll do well in this community. Hopkinton is the fourth branch for the restaurant. 110 Grill currently has locations in Berlin, Mass, Chelmsford, Mass, and Nashua, New Hampshire. Good afternoon. You said, uh, what were we going to say today? And all I can do is say uh, thank you and glad to be a part of the community. Uh, on behalf of the 110, we've been looking forward to this for over a year now and uh, we couldn't be happier. Uh, the amount of traffic and the amount of positive feedback that we've gotten before we've even opened the doors has just been uh, amazing. So once again on behalf of our executive team and my management team, thank you very much. Thank you all for coming. Uh, my name is Doug McLean, the Director of Operations for, for all the 110 Grills and we are truly very very excited about being here. I think the funniest thing is uh, the week we put the first shovel on the ground here, I believe we got an email that day asking someone to calling to book a party at 30. <laughs> you know, when they thought we were going to open. And, and that excitement has just grown and grown and it, it's been that way ever since. And it's exciting to have people feel that way. We have people coming up to the Berlin store, like the gentleman just said, and they're talking to us, hurry up down here, we can't wait, we can't wait. And, and to tell the truth, we can't wait. We are so excited for this day. We're so excited to cut this ribbon and, and bring you all inside to show you what we got. And we want to be your favorite place in town. We want to be your favorite place anywhere. And uh, that's what our goal is. And thank you for bringing us into your community. All right, gentlemen, on the count of three, it's going to happen on one, two, and three. Nicely done. Yeah. Uh, my name is Adam Dore. I'm the director of food and beverage for the company. Uh, we are overly excited to be here. It's been a long time coming. I think the overall feedback from the community uh, and the clientele and our guests is going to be uh, amazing. Again, we've had a lot of foot traffic and inquiries over the last few months and um, we're ready to open and we're ready to show the community and the town what we're made of and uh, exceed all of their expectations. I'm the executive culinary manager. Um, you know, my job is basically to oversee all the kitchens as they develop uh, throughout the company. Uh, I do a lot of research development for the company as well. Um, you know, I help with the, uh, the menu design and you know, the day-to-day -day operations in the back of the house. Uh, all right, are you excited for the uh, opening day today? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely been a long time in the waiting. You know, a lot of hard work. Um, you know, we have a great crew here and everyone's really excited and, and, and you know, pumped to be, you know, part of this. Congratulations and welcome to town, 110 Grill. The Hopkinton Public Library Foundation recently held their annual Touch A Truck event, Children and Adults 
got the chance to take a look at some cool cars, construction vehicles, emergency response vehicles, and much more. Here is a look at the fun-filled day. This year, the annual Touch a Truck and Food Truck Festival raised $14,000 towards the renovation and expansion efforts of the Hopkinton Public Library. The event took place in the Hopkinton High School parking lot and featured many various construction trucks, equipment, fire trucks, police cars, and more. The event also featured some terrific food trucks, including some brick oven pizza, and the ever so popular ice cream truck. A good time was had by all, and transportation was made easy by the roaming railroad. Today we've got the fifth um, annual Touch a Truck for the Hopkinton Public Library Foundation. Um, we basically have over 60 trucks here and nine food trucks. We started off with 20 trucks and now we've got close to 60. We added the food last year. And um, last year in the rain, we had over a thousand people. So we're hoping this year that we can have 1,500. Um, this year we have our, our Hoptoberfest again in October, which we sold out last year in three weeks. So we are excited for that. We raised normally over $30,000 for that. Um, and then we're in the works to start planning a gala um, for when our library actually opens up next spring. So we're pretty excited for that. And any of our thousand homes members are going to get a sneak preview of the library once the steel goes up so they can see what they've been a part of. You can view pictures of the annual Touch a Truck and Food Festival as well as many other Hopkinton events at seeninhopkinton.org. If you see a picture you like and want to hold on to, the pictures are available for download. Here is a look at some more scenes from the 2016 Touch a Truck and Food Festival. This year, the event raised $14,000 towards the Hopkinton Library Expansion and Renovation Project. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. To tell you more, here is Courtney Taylor with our HCAM Insider. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Saturday, June 25th at 1.30 p.m., it's Ashland Legion Baseball versus Newton. And at 3 p.m., it's Ashland Legion Baseball versus Lowell. On Monday, June 27th at 7 p.m., audience members step up to the mic to perform their original works on Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. Sky above, sky below. I walk carefully, afraid of cracking its delicate surface beneath my heavy boots. On Tuesday, June 28th at 7 p.m., Arthur Bergeron discusses how elders with dementia can stay in their community and live a happy life. On Wednesday, June 29th at 8.30 p.m., Michael Massione and Dennis Cates discuss what it takes to run Hopkinton Drug on a new Business Matters. We're a resource for physicians, we're a resource for patients. Um, where can they go? Who can they see? What products are available? How can we address what's not being addressed. On Friday, July 1st at 9 p.m., Liz Jeffress discusses how she joined Bay Path Humane Society and how the shelter helps animals on Meet Your Neighbor. I felt like so much passion and excitement being here and then mm. I'd be at work and I remember like be nagging people to take their like required minimum distributions. Are you you're gonna get a penalty from the IRS? And 
you know, I was just like, if they don't care, like I certainly don't, you know, mm -hmm. I was like, ah, mm -hmm. I gotta get out of here. On Sunday, July 3rd at 10 a.m., the planning board meeting from June 27th will air. Summer is here, and HCAM is working as hard as ever. You can find out what we're up to by visiting hcam.tv slash connect and signing up for our HCAM Insider Newsletter. And if you want to know what else is happening in town, you can sign up for our daily news updates. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Right now on our website, hcam.tv, you can view more from the Gateway Green Ceremony, as well as the opening of the 110 Grill, plus much more. If there is a photo, video, or story idea you would like to share with us, feel free to email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and thank you for watching HCAM. Open door.